Okay, cholesterol profiles improve when you replace carbohydrates with saturated fat. The only thing that doesn't is LDL cholesterol. And, and the idea that LDL cholesterol is a risk factor for heart disease dates to the 1970s, 60s, 70s. And it's 40-year-old science. And what's happened is we stuck with it because statins work. Statin drugs work for people at high risk of heart disease, and statins lower LDL cholesterol, and doctors like that idea. But meanwhile, the science has evolved, so that what we now know is that it's not the cholesterol in the LDL particle. LDL means low-density lipoprotein. It's a particle that travels around your bloodstream, and it's got cholesterol and these triglycerides in them. So the LDL particle itself is the problem. As so one person puts it, it's not the passengers, it's the bus. That's the problem. The passenger is the cholesterol. And the LDL comes, sometimes it comes large and fluffy. And fluffy is the technical term, and that's literally harmless. And sometimes it's small and dense. And when it's small and dense, it promotes atherosclerosis, plaques in your arteries. And it turns out that carbohydrates make LDL go from being large and fluffy to small and dense. And saturated fat, so if you have, if you're having breakfast, for instance, and it's you know, dried cereal and uh, uh, apple juice and skim milk and bananas, it's a nice carb-rich breakfast, and you replace it with eggs and bacon, your LDL cholesterol will go from being, your LDL particles will go from being small and dense, the bad kind, to being large and fluffy, the good kind. But in the process of being large and fluffy, the LDL cholesterol number will go up. So what appears to be a bad thing from 1970 science, and I know your head starts spinning, is a good thing from 21st century science. And this is one of the real tragedies about this, is when you replace carbs with saturated fat, all your, your entire metabolic profile gets better. Everything gets better. But one of the things that gets worse is LDL cholesterol. Not always, but a little bit. And we're obsessed with LDL cholesterol. So that's the basis by which we're not supposed to one do these diets. Question. We've got the room till 730, and, and I got to sign on. books. I can answer questions while I sign books, OK? <laughs> yes. You. OK. Yeah, there's a lot of research. Um, obesity, diabetes, is, there's a, when you're obese and diabetic, the fundamental defect is a condition known as insulin resistance. I don't have time to explain it, but, um, yeah, well, I will explain it. You must, basically, your muscle cells become resistant to the hormone insulin, so your body responds by pumping out more insulin to do the same job, and your insulin levels go up. So all day long, if you're overweight or obese, you probably have elevated, your insulin levels are higher than someone who's lean, and they stay higher for more of the day. And as we're learning in the 21st century, insulin actually promotes tumor growth, as does a hormone called insulin-like growth factor, promotes tumor growth. And it now appears that about 80% of all cancers are driven by elevated levels of insulin and IGF, which you get from eating refined carbs and sugars. Okay? Alzheimer's is a trickier, is a less um, well understood situation, and fewer people agree. But Alzheimer's, you, uh, you, know, you accumulate these amyloid plaques in your brain, and the amyloid is broken down. The amyloid precursor protein is called, is broken down by an enzyme that's known as IDE. And IDE stands for insulin degrading enzyme. So what this enzyme does ideally is break down insulin, but it also breaks down amyloid. So the simplest possible hypothesis for Alzheimer's is that as insulin levels go up, IDE spends more time breaking down insulin and less time breaking down amyloid in your brain, and the amyloid accumulates. And there's been work done at the University of Washington where you inject in, you know, as you raise insulin levels, you could see amyloid um, particles basically accumulating in the cerebral spinal fluid. So that's a much shakier, much more speculative connection, but it's there. What is clear is that if you're obese or diabetic, like I said, your risk of having Alzheimer's is higher. And the cancer stuff, I was writing about this. This is how my life is. I reported a story on the obesity, diabetes, cancer connection for science, the journal I write for, last September, October. 
and I haven't had time to write it yet, six months later. In the course of doing the story, I interviewed the head of Beth Israel Deaconess Cancer Center at Harvard Medical School, who's a guy who will probably win the Nobel Prize in the next 10 years for discovering a, a signaling molecule that sort of controls this insulin resistance concept. And this signaling molecule called PI3 kinase turned out to be what's called an oncogene, which means it's a tumor um, causing gene that creates this molecule. And I also interviewed the present head of the Memorial Sloan Kettering Hospital in Cancer Center in New York, which is the most prestigious cancer research hospital in the world. And neither one of, both of them are effectively on the Atkins diet, not because they're fat, but because they don't want to get cancer. I mean, I was, they told me this, it was like, you're, you know, I mean, this is, I write about this in the book, but I also say nobody, you know, the researchers who do it don't get it. All they think about, like I was, I was interviewing a guy in Switzerland who, you know, his discovery is basically a signaling molecule on this insulin signaling pathway that promotes cancer. And he discovered this and he said, so what we're trying to do is come up with a drug that mimics turning down insulin signaling. And I said to him, well, why don't you just tell people to eat less carbohydrates? <laughs> and again, it was like, well, then they're going to eat more fat and get heart disease, right? Um, these two guys, this Harvard professor at Harvard Medical School, who's got, you know, this stand-up, they ever heard of uh, Stand Up to Cancer? It's this new foundation. They've had some, um, you know, they've raised hundreds of million dollars for dream teams of cancer researchers. He runs one of these dream teams doesn't eat refined carbs and sugars because he doesn't want to get cancer. Um, it's, uh, you know, I got to write the story. That's all I can say. I mean, it's just, I keep saying, if I could just finish this assignment, then I could write that one. I'm going to sit down, sign books, feel free to ask questions. I'll take this. Thank you. You know, the low-fat dogma spreads to everything. Mm -hmm. So without any real research, like nobody ever did a clinical trial comparing a low-fat diet to a high-fat diet of prostate cancer. They just, it's kind of, this is a healthy diet, this is what you should eat.